assuming um, lower numbers today because it's Friday the 13th and people are just mm. nervous about uh, <laughs> joining the call today. <laughs> well, we're not scary on any day, I think, but right. it, it, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> we try not to be, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, I think... This is a good time to get started. I'm just checking all my stuff here. Oh, I'm ch checking the uh, chat. We're good there. All right. So we'll go ahead and jump on in and let people uh, file in as needed. So glad to see everybody here on the Teams call and on LinkedIn if you're joining from there as well. Uh, this is Ricardo Wilkins and Stacey Mildenberger, and we are. Cute for Teams, champions using Teams effectively. If you're new to this, this is Office Hours. Ask me anything. Come here with questions or just to listen as we chat about Teams and collaboration in general. So as always, feel free to come off mute, uh, ask a question, use uh, the chat as well. We'll try to hit them up um, as we can. And uh, I'm checking the chat. I see there's a ask about town hall, um, which I think we talked about a little last time. Um, and so I said, listen, are you using town hall? Because I was just testing it and this looks like town hall, like a town hall meeting that you're doing. Yeah, um, I don't I mean, this this meeting has been recurring for a while. So unless something, you know, automatically changed it, I don't I don't think I create started this as a town hall. Um, however, I mean, it does have some features like green room, which you guys, I don't know if you would even be able to see that on your end, but uh, um, it certainly has some of those features. But, yeah, I don't think this is a town hall per se. I guess, like I say, it's been recurring for months, um, a recurring, recurring meeting, so. Um, but yeah, we can talk about that. Um, but I see, I see, uh, Stacy put in the chat, uh, the, uh, link about, uh, town hall. Uh, let me make a little adjustment here. Uh, one sec. There we go. Um, and then info on teams compatible app. Oh, so the, oh, so someone's asking about a team compatible app called AI notes. I'm soon as a third party app. Um, I don't, I, you know, third party app. I'm not familiar with that specific app. Uh, Stacy, I don't know if you are either. I'm not either. I was going to jump over to um, the Microsoft Admin Center and just see if it shows up in an app that can be enabled. Yeah. That's an interesting question. Uh, I'd be interested in knowing the, um, I guess, the uh, heart of uh, that, you know, the AI notes, you know, what it does, what you're looking for it to do. I mean, my, my, just by the name of it seems uh, similar to what we would call intelligent recap with our team's premium and things like that. Um, so I don't know if you've got any other insight on AI notes uh, with your question there. Oh, hi, this is Glenn. Yep. Um, one of our users asked about AI notes and I, um, discussed it with our information security and they just said no AI allowed under any circumstances. So I went, well, gee, all three of us, the user, our info security person and myself all really don't know anything about this thing called AI notes. So I thought I would try and learn more about it mm -hmm. to see if it's something that we could possibly get is it Microsoft or third party? I don't even know that. So yeah. I couldn't find anything. So I just wondered if you could. It's not Microsoft as far as I'm aware. Right, Ricardo? You haven't heard of us yeah. having it. A... So the way when, when you describe that, uh, I mean, I'm a, I guess I'm assuming this is literally AI knows is the name of this app versus a generic uh <laughs> description of I want a I want generically AI notes you know in my in my tool so I'm assuming this is a specific thing because yes for from our perspective our our quote-unquote AI notes would come in the form of things like intelligent recap or copilot or um, you know all the AI things that we have 
Um, so that would be the one question is, is if they just start generically looking for notes that use AI. Uh, that brings up the good point, you know, when you say your org is saying no AI right now, that's an interesting conversation that we're having, you know, across customers too. Some are, you know, saying no, some are trying to get ready for the inevitable, you know, those kind of things. Many are trying to get their governance or their, as many of them say, their guardrails in place. Uh, related to AI. So it certainly is, is no surprise, I'm sure, to anybody uh, a, a hot topic these days. Um, so, you know, I'm always interested in the conversation w that starts with, you know, no to the AI, like what are the challenges or, or, or fears or concerns? Um, and especially as, you know, things start launching on the Microsoft side and in the team side related to Copilot and other things like that. So. It's an interesting uh, concept. I don't know, even in the uh, chat or other folks on the call, if uh, anybody else has a thought or their organization has thoughts on this AI concept uh, in your collaboration tools. That's always a, a interesting one for me. The astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson was being interviewed on TV, and he said, um, AI is already here. It's here to stay. And it's going to get bigger, so figure out how you're going to interact with it. And so I think that, you know, our information security folks always say no to everything new in the beginning, which, you know, they used to say no to everything cloud. And now we have teams on the cloud. So, you know, they need information um, to make a decision. And um, the user said that uh, she had heard about this not generic AI notes, but a specific Teams compatible app, third party AI notes. I need to go back to her and find out more information, but um, uh, yeah. that's, so I'm just trying to gather information and the more information I can get to our information security folks, the better they are able to make an informed decision. Um, and I understand why they just say no to everything in the beginning, because that's their job to protect us. So they they need, uh, you know, hard information before they will allow anything. And I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, based on the chat, Stacy isn't finding that specific uh, app in the app store, per se. Right. So, yeah. So which uh, doesn't mean it, it's not an app, you know, it just means it, it doesn't have an automatic integration into uh into teams could still be an app out there just with some other kind of integration okay thank you perhaps she encountered it in another um way i'll right. try and get more information yeah that'd be helpful <clears throat> is that you, you sharing your screen <laughs> ricardo yeah that's me uh am i sharing the wrong thing there oh. uh yeah. Yeah. Not that I was about to show anything. I was just kind of getting getting it ready in case in case we needed to. Yeah. Show anything. OK. Yeah. Uh, we definitely have other folks on the call. Is uh, any any um, questions, comments, feedback from anybody else on uh, any of this? I'm actually, going to. Yeah, always, always curious about folks' uh, AI thoughts. In fact, um, you know, Copilot is, uh, you know, one of the things where, you know, you know, you know will be coming. Because uh, to your point, um, AI is already here, as, as you kind of mentioned. And so, I mean, there are products that have an AI piece to them that, you know, we did before AI became a big buzzword, we weren't calling them AI, but, you know intelligence and in our collaborative tools has, has always been there. And then, you know, the, the new the new iteration of that being things like Copilot, um, which I know is far off, especially as we think about uh, government cloud. Um, does anybody maybe by show of uh, hand, hand raises or something or, or, or thumbs up or something have an interest in uh, the Copilot, you know, releases uh, in the future? Or is that another one that people are kind of going to block for a while or? But you know, maybe by thumbs up, any interest in Copilot? Okay. 
and it may be something still people are lear learning what it is, you know. <laughs> uh, I saw one thumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the chat, though, uh, Glenn mentioned the approvals app. So I don't know if we want to maybe table that till we get a little closer to, to you know, other announcements that might be relevant for this group. But we could talk about approvals app in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know I know we went over that last time. Uh, is there a specific uh, Glenn, is there a maybe a specific piece of it that uh, you got some questions on? I think we went over it at a very high oh. level in terms of what it is and, and how it functions. Yeah, yeah, high level. Um, we've applied to our information security to get approvals app approved. Mm -hmm. And since it's, um, you know, uh, uh, a mainstream thing, it looks like they are going to approve it. So people, we don't even have it yet, but people are starting to ask me, how do I use it? And I don't know because we don't have it yet. So mm -hmm. anything you have to say would be helpful. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so in terms of, I'm wondering um, what would be a good uh, scenario. I mean, we can go through it here. I think um, there's a whole other level of this if you start applying. I think there's like, like some Adobe integration or something in, in this as well. But let me see here. So a basic new approvals request. Um, I'm throwing some documentation in the chat too, since it seems yeah. like something that Glenn, you might want to keep handy for when it is enabled. You'll have that documentation at your fingertips. I will throw on an, a little nostalgia hat here for a second, because for any of you that are longtime SharePoint users, you may remember approval workflows in SharePoint. And in fact, they may mm -hmm. still be there, um, uh, pro probably buried under the layers of the shiny new, you know, Power Automate stuff that's that's there and i certainly encourage you to use the shiny stuff for sure but i, I but i bet they're probably still that still in in there and so it's the same concept so I, i'm kind of it's kind of a plug for sharepoint's been doing this for decades kind of maybe not dececades but a lot of years um and, th and this is like the newest shiniest iteration of this because even in the sharepoint days this idea of multiple uh approvers as you see here um, and, uh, you know, I can add multiples, I can decide what, which order, you know, require responses in a designed order. Um, all of this was a thing in, in SharePoint as well. There was this concept of, I need my approvals to be in order, right? If, if number one here does, uh, and I guess I can put some names in here. If Nestor doesn't approve it, then there's no need for Bob to even get it kind of a thing or take this off and put Bob in here. And that now I need a response from everyone, but not necessarily in any given order. They're, they're all have an equal, um, uh, they're, everyone's approval is, is, is equal importance versus the first person's or the second person, you know, versus the order. So that's one concept there when you're talking about approvals um, with this app or really, really any approval workflow is deciding how the responses need to occur. And put some additional you know details in here about you know what I need them to see when they're approving it. Um, you know here would be where I would like um, attach the thing to be approved. Um, custom responses, um, you know, if I'm going to help, you know, give them something to choose from. In fact, um, let's do this and I should be able to check out Nestor to see what he gets on when I submit this. Um, all right. And, uh, sending to another environment. I've not tried that. I'm, uh, wonder if that's actually another tenant. I'm not, I'm going to mess with that one for now. Well, we got that going. I'm going to go ahead and hit send. And so on my end, um, I suspect in a sec I'll see uh, what I've sent show up here. I'm going to fire up Nestor. Uh, da -ba -da -ba -da. Let's go here. There's Nestor. And uh, go to 
let's go, uh, you know, teams that, um, that Microsoft.com. I'm assuming he'll get this in his uh, feed. I might want to open up his uh, email too. Da -da -da. So there we go. Ricardo Wilkins Gov sent you a request. It's in his feed. It should have been. Yeah, it's going a little slow today. But there you see um, there's in my in Nestor's feed is his request from me to approve the doc. And here's this the approvals app on his end with uh, the you know the actual approval, the stuff that I wrote, the attachment there. And um, let's let's Nestor know about other approval approvers in this chain. Um, and here is the custom responses I, I, uh, put in there. You'll notice a reassign button. Maybe Nestor feels, uh, that, that, uh, someone else needs to chime in on this too. He's got that option there. Uh, but we'll go ahead and do a go for it. And the, the demo, uh, uh, spirits are not, uh, happy here on October 13th. So something went wrong there let me try see if I could try it again nice <laughs> I like I like that it failed actually because of the October 13th I think that was very appropriate <laughs> on back on Ricardo's side um uh see I mean yep yeah. uh so here we got in my feed Nestor responded click on that I'm seeing uh, that and I'm seeing the chain of events, right? So here's Nestor responding, go for it, still pending for Bob. I could cancel, I can follow up, and I would expect here I am in, in my approvals app again, and there is that's what I was waiting to see. There is my actual uh, approval that I sent out as well. So as the person that created it, I'm monitoring it, I can click on it to see where things are in the chain. Uh, again, nostalgia wise, this brings me back to SharePoint that used to have a little visual of uh, who's responded and all that stuff. But this is a lot, a lot fancier and shinier. Um, so, yeah, so so that's what we got. And I guess uh, I don't have Bob. I should have picked a, a persona I had ready. I don't have Bob K lined up to go put in his response. But uh, once that would be done, then I should I would suspect see the status change. Um, so, you know, very simple, you know, the, this approval is pretty simple. Um, we did see that there are some templates here. Um, not many and, and you can probably, and it's probably, this is a really about creating your own and add them. And, and this may be one I think that I did create in a, in a, a while back. So this one is, uh, some kind of vehicle application. Yeah, I think I might've created this many, many moons ago. So you can create your own to just help you with, uh, you know, using this uh, in a quicker way. Um, but you know, that's, that's it in a nutshell actually is, uh, you know, simple, basic approvals. And, you know, the key being that it's in one spot, it's integrated with teams with, with it, you know, showing up in the feed and being right there without having to go to another place in the old school SharePoint. Uh, life, uh, these interactions all occurred in your inbox. Uh, for the most part, uh, I remember as a as a consultant back in the days, you know, getting paid a lot of money to help make that experience uh, better for folks who wanted to see it in mobile and all that. This is back in the day when that just wasn't a thing, and now this is a thing, you know. And so uh, uh, we haven't we didn't try the mobile experience, but. Um, I suspect this would have shown in the uh, mobile app very nice and neatly as well. So which is which is huge. Right. When when someone can on the go get these approvals and, and very easily interact with them um, uh, and, uh, through their through their mobile device as well. So uh, hopefully that was a pretty good uh, demo there, even with our nice little uh, something went wrong message there. Hopefully that helped. <laughs> And as I was doing that, it looks like the chat was blowing up. You guys are talking in chat, and that's great. Um, do you have the link? Yeah, to we were just we were just connecting on how to best stay 
up to date on releases and news and all things Microsoft if you're an admin. And of course, I referred and to the um, Microsoft Admin Center and the Message Center within the Admin Center. And it seems like she might be struggling with access. I think um, the Message Center could require a certain role in order to access that. So yeah, perhaps. It, that link, any any Message Center admin link like that, you, you, uh, you need to be my thought is the problem is probably if you are an admin and, and it doesn't work, you know, I always have to open up my separate profile because um, if you're an admin, you're sometimes also a normal user as well. And so that link is specific. It will it will be broken for anyone that's not logged in as their admin account or um, and, and it'll work otherwise. So I usually have to take those links and either take them over to my demo tenant where I'm an admin or to a particular a browser profile, um, which is why I love browser profiles, edge profile so much. So. A way to guarantee that it's not an issue with the link I posted is to just go to office.com, yep. pick your admin center from your list of apps, and that will take you directly in and, and use the credentials you have. But if you, if you don't have access, then it's the level of admin perhaps that, you carry might also need to use uh incognito you know or private browser mode if, if it's if it's an issue of you know you're having different if you've got different login credentials so. um, looking at the chat here i thought i saw um, da -da -da -da. Uh, let's see, approval apps, yep. Oh, and, and someone talked about research and co-pilot, seeking out the risks that uh, either legal or cybersecurity might have concerns about, yep. Um, I don't, you know, I don't have links handy, but I know we continue to publish content about, you know, uh, um, AI and security and compliance and things like that. I know, for instance, even the Bing chat that you may or may not be using today, you know, very specifically talks about your data being protected. It's your data, those kind of things. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of customers trying to get on, get, get ahead of that, right? And start to, um, you know, publish their content about, you know, again, those guardrails and how they want to, um, you know, interact with this. So it's good to get the jump on, on things there. So we have a couple of minutes left. I see the, uh, Windows 11 Copilot down there. Yeah. 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 I don't know That's if anybody. Cool. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's tried this. I know uh, if you follow me on LinkedIn, I um, posted a. I'm or, I'm starting to post more practical uses of this. Uh, the one that may resonate with you all is, you know, as as information workers, is if you've ever had a list of email addresses uh, and, and some text that you needed to pop into an email and it's not really formatted well. I, I had a, this blob of text that had email addresses in it. I popped it in the Copilot and, or uh, yeah, Copilot here and told it to just give me the, uh, the email addresses with the semicolons on the end, you know, ready to go. It did all the work and then I just copy and pasted it into my email and I was good to go. So that saved me what normally would have took me probably 10 minutes or so did it in like five seconds so that was pretty nice but this certainly is a windows 11 thing i know that it may not be full in the government space maybe you don't have a full deployment of windows 11 yet right um, that's where you're seeing this okay and uh i got somebody saying they're they're getting windows 11 soon so any teams windows 11 info would be helpful so when you say teams and windows 11 uh the only thing I would mention specific to Teams in Windows 11, maybe there's others, but the big one being that, and I've mentioned it in the past, that share, actually, let me just fire it up. Uh, I'm in a meeting and I want to share, let me close that. I want to share, oops, let me, I gotta do one thing over here. Start up a meeting. Sharing can be done through the taskbar is ultimately where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so that is a Windows 11 thing. So instead of hitting the share button, I can come down here and hit the share this window. So that's the main thing I can think of of a Teams Windows 11 um, thing. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah. I use that one a lot. stuff yeah I just had my my co-pilot turn my um, desktop preferences from dark mode to light mode mm -hmm. and then and then it asked me to confirm I confirmed and it made everything light and then I asked it to set it to dark mode and in one click it took care of that for me I thought that was really cool I didn't have to navigate away to find the menu to do that yeah can we get a uh a thumb, a hand raise for all people who are fans of dark mode, like myself. Let's see how many dark mode fans we have in the room. If I show a hand raise, <laughs> just one. What? I love it's dark. you and me, man. <laughs> I know. I love dark mode. I do too. And you know, maybe I'm, I'm being presumptuous. Uh, Dark mode being, um, if I turn it on system-wide here in the uh, app or in Teams, you know, kind of what you would expect here as I, let me make a change here. You know, everything kind of is more black based with uh, light text, kind of easier on the eyes, I guess, depending, but yeah, no, no, no dark mode fans in the room today. Interesting. I come from a developer background, so uh, dark mode came to the Visual Studio back in the day, and I was a big fan of it then, and just kept going uh, from there. Interesting. Well, I agree. I I would think it would be higher number. Yeah. You know, maybe. So I guess then for the demo purposes, I'll keep it on light since nobody likes dark mode. I don't want to make yeah. anybody mad. <laughs> <laughs> So. We are here to serve. <laughs> right. <laughs> Good deal. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. And, and somebody, at least in the chat, wasn't familiar with the mode. So hopefully that uh, little demo helped. Um, but as, as it showed, you know, you can turn it on from a Windows 11 perspective, and then all the apps will comply. Um, for the most part with well, not all apps, but many apps will comply with your system wide setting. But that dark versus light mode is also an option in your different uh, office apps. You could go into Outlook and tell Outlook specifically to go to dark mode, things like that. So, um, again, it's a, obviously certainly a preference, but uh, one, one could argue it's uh, easier on the eyes. Uh, just kind of just depends on your preference. Um, I believe even yeah, in fact, uh, even here in Teams, since we're, oh. I mean, you see it there in your settings, general and dark. And then this is what dark mode for Teams would look like. All right, across and the board. I wish I knew. I promise to keep this group posted when Copilot is coming. Oh, yeah, question in the chat there, yep. Yeah, I'm sorry, I just totally interjected there, but we did have a question about when Copilot is coming to the GCC. So the answer right now is TBD. Gotcha. All right. Um, uh, and so to your point, and you're talking about your preparing for training. Um, while Copilot in, as in general availability may not be here for a while, the documentation is certainly, you know, coming out a lot faster. Um, so um, at least in terms of pre preparation, whether you're going to support.microsoft.com or learn.microsoft.com, probably are one of the two places. And then I think there's probably a landing page, I'm sure, landing page, I'm sure, for uh, Copilot in general, microsoft.com slash Copilot probably. <laughs> Uh, but the documentation would be there for sure, even if the actual bits aren't aren't out to you yet. So just keep that in mind. All right. Well, it's about that time. Um, glad everybody was able to join. Um, hopefully that was helpful. And um, 
yeah, we'll uh, hit you up uh, next time. Again, reach out if you got a topic you'd like us to prepare, you know, a demo for, and hopefully it'll work a little better than that demo I just did, and uh, we'll be happy to help. So, good stuff. See you all next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and check out the blog for more content.